I want to talk about it. I, I want you to talk about his brain and what and what we know actually physically. What what do we know from Einstein? So you need to tell the story about what actually happened for those in the audience who... Well, you know, cut me off because it's a long story, but it begins, the brain, the story of the brain begins when he passes away uh, on April 18th, 1955. He knew he was going to die. Uh, he'd actually been living on borrowed time. He had an aortic aneurysm, uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm, and he didn't have much he could do for it in those days. He'd actually had an operation several years earlier. They, they would wrap cellophane around it with the idea that you'd scar down to keep it from rupturing, but it, it didn't hold, and it came back. And uh, he knew it, and so April 18th, 1955, he passes away, uh, utters a few words of indecipherable German, we don't know what he said, and the, the body is taken down for the autopsy, the routine post-mortem determined the cause of death. And now, had he left instructions? No, nothing, nothing, there is nothing in the will about the disposal of his body. Somehow it was known, though, he wanted to be cremated. That, that was known. Um, April 19th, which that thing you just showed was the next day in the New York Times, his family, basically his son Hans Albert and his executor Otto Nathan read that the brain has been kept. And they're going, what? Nothing mentioned in, in, in the will, but that was like not on the script. And they go to the pathologist, Thomas Harvey, a guy in his 40s who's the only chief pathologist at this little medical, uh, little hospital, Princeton Hospital, and Harvey pitches the, the pitch of his life, and he says, we're never going to get another chance like this. Let, let me study the brain. And Hans Albert goes for it, and so does Otto Nathan. So what do we know? What do we know as a result of, of preserving? I mean, I can show you some pictures. I Let's mean, do that. Okay. Let me tell you what we don't know. We'll start, okay. Okay, it's not a bigger brain. It's not a bigger brain. Okay, that's, you it's know. It's not bigger. It's not bigger. It's 1,230 grams. Not a big brain. So if you're into the bigger is better, it doesn't work for central nervous system. But the architecture is different. And rather than me say, well, this squiggle goes there and that squiggle, let me show, go. okay, all right. So l let me just, okay, let me just orient you real quick. Cut me off if this goes too long. Okay, frontal lobe, that's the back of your brain. This is his right, this is his right hemisphere. The, right there is the split, the hemispheric split, inner hemispheric split, okay. Just the highlight, the game highlights on this. Okay, here's your frontal, frontal lobes. One, two, three, four. Four frontal gyri. The great, great, great majority, we don't have, of us have three. He had four. That is a serious anomaly. How do we know that? Because there are standard atlases of brain anatomy, Ono and Connolly. And again, I am stealing from my colleague, Dean Falk, who's the real anatomist in this, and she poured over this brain. But in any event, that is not standard issue, that frontal lobe. Okay. So All right. one more makes a big difference. Okay, got it. Yeah, I mean, that's the, you know, if I say anything more than that, you're going to say, well, you're a phrenologist, and I'm not. All I can tell you is the brain is different, and the guy was a genius. Um, that's all I can tell you. That's not going to get you an A on the final. Okay, go ahead. I know, ahead. I know. I'd love to say. Okay, all right. There's your cortical knob, the violin part. Yeah. See that thing? Cortical knob. That's, that, that's on the right hemisphere, so that's presumably... What, what's the knob? We, well, it, well, call it an omega sign. Call it a kink. They just, the, the literature calls it a knob. You see, it's that little, I'll that show it to thing. you better, but that little U-turn there? Yeah. That's not standard issue. And there's stuff we don't even know. This is, uh, this is a diagonal uh, sulcus. Here... There's no name. I talked to Dean Falk, uh, emailed her this morning. There's no name for that thing. It's not described in, in regular anatomy, uh, anatomy textbooks. So he's got a lot of variant anatomy. Okay, this is if you cut the brain in half, okay? okay. All right, so that's the frontal lobe. That's your occipital lobe. That's your corpus callosum. That's the fiber pathway that connects up your right hemisphere with your left hemisphere. We didn't do it. We, we recovered this photograph. These photographs have been lost for half a century. We recovered these photographs, and now we start to analyze them. And uh, Dr. Men, Wei Wei Men out in East China Normal, sees the photo, goes, wow, look at that corpus callosum, sets up a computer program. He's got a larger than normal corpus callosum. Large, not age large for age-matched guys, but for even young people. He's got greater internal wiring anatomically with his corpus callosum which opens up a whole nother can of worms where you're not really talking about the stuff on your surface, on your cortex, you're talking about the internal wiring. And he obviously, this is a sign of greater white matter internal wiring, or if you want to use the sexy new terms, connectome. He has a, a, a different connectome.
Um, so his brain really was different than everybody else's. No doubt about it. 